Hello and welcome to Life Church. I'm Scylla and I'm Celia and we are part of the student leader group here at Life Church and lovely to see you this morning. Um, I study social anthropology at the University of Edinburgh and I study fashion design and we want to say a particularly warm welcome to any new students here. Um, we're so excited that you found our service. Um, we hope that you're settling in well and yeah please reach out to us if you're new here and want to have any more info or want us to get in contact we'd love to meet you um, and yeah get to know you yep um we are going to head into a time of worship now um Celia, would you like to say a prayer for mm -hmm. us yeah father god thank you so much for this time together um i pray that you will meet with each of us in our own homes or wherever we're watching this lord that um yeah this time of worship um would be a time to glorify you amen amen Good morning, church. Stand together in Russia.
let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you that we can worship you even in our own homes um, when we're all separated, Lord. Um, I pray that our worship is glorifying you, Lord, and I pray that you will prepare our hearts for the message that is about to be shared. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alrighty. Um, the notices for this week's events are going to appear along the bottom. And um, that's everything that's going on for Life Church this week. Um, so do keep up with that. <laughs> and for all the freshers, we've got some really great freshers events happening throughout this whole week. Um, so there is a link to our website on the bottom of the screen as well. So head over there for more information. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're going to have the reading, mm -hmm. which is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 15. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we, have, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Um, thank you for that. Um, we are doing a series on prayer and Jacob is going to take over now for the sermon. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be together uh, this morning. And I'm really looking forward to diving uh, again into prayer looking at the Lord's Prayer and getting to grips uh, a little bit more about what this prayer means for our lives and in our lives. This morning uh, we're going to hone in and focus on verse 10 and I want to open this morning by reading to us a quote from Philip Yancey. He says this, If prayer stands in the place where God and humans meet, then I must learn about prayer. Most of my struggles in the Christian life circle around the same two themes. Why God doesn't act the way we want God to, and why I don't act the way God wants me to. Prayer is the point where these two themes converge. I think that is a, a true reflection of the life of prayer. And I really believe that as we hone in this morning on verse 10, that's exactly what we are met with. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is from heaven. Your kingdom, your will from heaven. What Jesus is doing here in this portion of the prayer is he is, he is setting out for us life's agendas. He's setting out for us life's priorities from the agenda of God. And I don't know if you remember a, a couple of weeks ago, I was describing my conviction about prayer. My, my longing for prayer to be more prevalent, more um, unceasing in my own personal life. And that reflection bore out also in the church. And it wasn't so much that I wasn't praying at all. It was that I wasn't praying enough. And what I've come to realise over, over years is that the Lord's Prayer has become so familiar to me. And perhaps for you, if you're a Christian too this morning, the Lord's Prayer is a prayer that we've heard over and over and over and over again. But we've never perhaps allowed the prayer to actually form our lives, to actually begin to form and shape who we are and how we live, and in actual fact, how we even pray. And I wonder, 
upon reflection on this verse, on this portion of the Lord's Prayer in verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I wonder if that's one of the reasons that we come a little bit unstuck in prayer. That we arrive at, at this portion of the prayer and, and, and it's began to be a part of how we've learned how to pray. But we arrive at this portion of prayer and, and, and we feel like, I'm not sure I really believe this. I'm not sure I can really genuinely pray this part of the prayer. I can't pray that if I don't believe it. I can't say that if I don't believe it. That is, do you, do you really long? Do you really want the kingdom of God to come? Do you really want in all of the circumstances and situations in your life, do you really want the will of God to come and to happen in your life? And so we say, I can't, I can't genuinely pray these prayers. We become stilted at this stage of prayer and, and maybe we recite something along the lines of this, this, this portion of the prayer in our own prayer lives because we feel like it's what we should do. But in this part of the prayer, as I was encouraging us in weeks gone by, the Lord, we open, we enter in prayer through relationship with the Father. And the Lord wants us, the Father wants us to be in prayer with all genuineness and authenticity. And so when we arrive at this part of the prayer or when we arrive in, in these sections of our own prayer life, we, 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 we feel stilted because it feels like there's maybe an unauthenticity about it. It's more like recital than, than relationship. We become really uncertain at this po point of our prayer lives. And the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that all of a sudden is not so good. It started out so well. Our Father drawing us into the nearness and intimacy with him in prayer all of a sudden becomes not so good. You see, why is it we start to say, God doesn't want what I want. Why does my father not think like I think? Why does my father God in heaven not feel how I feel about this and that? And I think Yancey, in the quote that I read this morning, he, he really hits the nail on the head. It, it's an actual fact, it's why we should pray. It's at the point of prayer that our earthly selves, they are met with a heavenly God. That in prayer, our needs, our wants, our desires are, are, are come to um, be converged with those of the heavenly places. And it's exactly why we should pray. Jesus is making for us really clear distinctions, isn't he, in this portion of the text. Um, what he's saying to us here is he's saying, your, your kingdom come, God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The distinction he's making is between the kingdom of God, the will of God, the, the, the position of God in heaven versus Jacob's kingdom, Jacob's will, and Jacob's current position and situation here. I don't know why I'm speaking uh, about myself in the third person, but about our, um, my will, my kingdom, and my current um, home here. On earth. Jesus is making a distinction for us in prayer and he's making it clear to us. It means then that there are multiple kingdoms, there are multiple wills and our will in prayer is one of them. And Augustine, one of the great sort of uh, theologians involved heavily in the Reformation, he really helpfully categorises these two kingdoms, the kingdom of, essentially the kingdom of self and the kingdom of God. And he calls them these two things. He says that there are two kingdoms, the city of God and the city of man. The city of God and the city of man. What he describes is the will behind those things are that in the city of God, it flows from a love for God. In the city of God, in the kingdom of God, in the will of God, it flows out of a love for God. In the city of man, it flows out of a love for self. If we reflect on that momentarily, 
it would seem obvious to us that in the city of God is an eternal place. In the city of man is a temporal place. And I want to speak to us this morning about this. I want, to, I want us to consider and think this morning that both of these things are important. Both of these things are significant. Both matter, but one is to be prioritised. Um, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but in my prayer life, uh, I have had no troubles um, whatsoever praying uh, about myself. Um, the only trouble I've ever had in praying for myself is potentially a little bit of guilt because I felt like actually I shouldn't be praying for myself, I should be praying for other people. But the reality is, and I'm sure it's true of most of us, that we have no trouble praying for ourselves. We have no trouble thinking about ourselves. We have no trouble talking about ourselves. And so often our prayer lives, they revolve around self. They revolve around everything about ourselves. I don't have any problems prioritising myself in prayer. And when we operate in prayer like this, it's as though we, we treat God as, as, as this genie to us. We, we, we have no problem asking a genie for something. And so we end up treating God, we can end up treating God in this sort of way. I can pray away the day about myself and my kingdom and my will, my hopes, my desires, my dreams. And see, you and I, we know it. We know it's true and so does Jesus. And this is why in the prayer, Jesus is moving us from a prayer of self, uh, from the city of self, from the city of man to the city of God. See, this is not coincidental at all that Jesus moves us in prayer in this way. He knows that the inclination of our sin is towards ourselves. And so Jesus, this, this prayer is not flippant words from Jesus. It's deliberate and intentional when he says them. And so perhaps you, again, are, are there and, and are similar to me. You know, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I want the kingdom of God. I want the will of God. I want those things, but I also want them alongside my things. I want them alongside my own kingdom. I want them alongside my own will. John Eldridge, he puts it like this. He says, even dear devoted followers of Christ can hang on to large tracks of their own inner kingdom. It looks like Jesus and Jesus and God's kingdom and, and God's will. Yeah, I really want that, but I, I want that and I want God's kingdom, God's will. I want that and I want that job. His will, his kingdom and that marriage that I really want. His kingdom and, and his will and I want that, that child. His kingdom, uh, his will and I want this healing. Let's be real. These are, these are real significant, important things in all of our lives. And I don't know what it is. Jesus, God, his kingdom and my kingdom. But Jesus, he's, he's drawn us into a new priority. A new order for ourselves. A new order for life. And I want to say to us this morning, it's not that these things are not important. These things are very important. These things are, are more important to your Heavenly Father than you could even dare to dream or imagine. So I want to encourage you. I want you to pray for those things. They're important. Our Father in, in Heaven is a Father that loves to give good gifts to His children. And I long for you guys, I long for us in the church to come to God with all authenticity, with all genuineness. But I want to encourage us this morning something else. That authenticity, that genuineness in prayer, because what it is, is, is communion and relationship with God. We so too should be able to come to God when we don't desire the kingdom of God and the will of God. 
we so, we so too should be able to come to God and say, Lord, Father, I don't desire those things. I don't long for those things as I should. And Father, I, I want to. Will you help me to see the wonder and the beauty, the majesty of those things above all other things? Guys, that's why we pray. That's why we pray. So these things, these things that make up your life, all the, the wants, the needs, the desires, the dreams that you have, they're important. And God the Father, he cares for those things. They're important, but they're not of first importance. These things, they're important, but they're not of first importance. This is what Jesus is saying to us as he offers us the prayer of prayers this morning. Jesus is giving us a list of priorities. Then he's putting for us presence over provision. Jesus in this prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, holy be your name, glorified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See these three first petitions, they're petitions for presence, not presents. Jesus is describing to us our greatest need. And our greatest need, though we do not know it yet, or that we do not long for it yet, or we do not feel it yet, is the need for the very presence of God. Jesus in this prayer, and then in our prayer lives, he longs for us to put first the presence of God before the provision, before the gifts, before the blessings of God. As I said, in our, in our sin, in our self-centeredness, we're numbed to the wonders of the heavenly places. We're blinded to the glory and the greatness and the joy and the goodness that comes from our Heavenly Father. And so to pray like this, to pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is to long for the heavenly places. To acknowledge within ourselves and within our life there is something more, there is something better, there is something greater that flows from the heavenly places. There's something more on the other side of this temporal city of man for me. And it's to long for those things in the here and in the now. To pray your will, your kingdom come is to recognise that there is a disconnect between earth and heaven. You see, interestingly, Jesus, he, 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 he's not praying this prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. As in, you know, Lord, come back, take me out of her, earth and take me to heaven now. He's actually not saying that. He's, he's calling us to bear with, to be in the world, to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven into this earth. You see that? By praying this prayer, we recognise there's a disconnect between earth and heaven. And by praying this prayer, we long for the heavenly things to come into this earth, to come into our own individual personal realities, but also into this world. And to cry out, God, bring more of your heavenly, uh, your heavenly greatness and goodness into this world here and now. And when we pray this prayer, the Lord Jesus is calling us and wanting us to understand this thing. And I want us to follow this through in our prayer lives this week. When we say, our Father, who art in heaven, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. What we're saying is, hallowed, holy, glorify your name in the earth. Then we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What, what we're saying there is we're not saying, Lord... I know you're great, I know you're powerful, I know you're awesome, I know you're magnificent, and I know I'm not like you. And so Lord, what I need you to do is help me with my little world, but also, will you just sprinkle down heaven? Will, will you just like 
rain down a bit of heaven so the earth would be a little bit nicer. When we pray that prayer, what Jesus is calling us to pray is he's calling us to pray that the kingdom of God, the will of God, the, 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 um, the purity, the holiness of God would come in me, would come in my life, would, 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 would shape my life, would, would, I would become more sanctified, I would become more holy, I would become pure, I, I, would, um, I would be a, a, a home for your Holy Spirit and your presence. Lord, I pray that your kingdom would come in me. Lord, I pray that your will would come and be done in me. And in doing that, Father God, your name would be glorified, your, your heavenly principles and values and goodness and coming in me would spread into this world. What we're asking for this morning, what we're asking for in prayer and what we're longing for as Christians in this world is to anticipate heaven. We are to anticipate heaven and bring it here and in prayer and the Lord's prayer, that is what we are calling out to God for. That's what we're crying out to God for. That the reign of Christ, that we would increasingly reflect his love that we would increasingly become devoted and obey him and keep his commands and his will by doing good to other people. This is why we pray. This is why we pray. You see, we pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not because God needs help to do it, but because we need help desiring it. And I said it earlier, it's okay. It's okay if you're sat here this morning. If you recognise your, your, the, the, the depravity of your, your desire for the heavenly places in your life, it's okay. Because in prayer we come through the door of relationship with our Father. And so I, I really want to encourage you this morning to start exactly where you are. Lord, I don't long for these things. I don't desire these things as I ought. Father, will you move within me in such a way that I do, that I come to reflect your presence in this world. Okay, Augustine. Augustine really helps again to create a framework for us when he continues on the theme of the city of God and the city of man. It's really important, isn't it? I really want us to understand that these two cities are linked. They, they, they matter. They both really matter. And, and, and he describes these two cities, um, th this converging that happens in our life as we become a Christian. Uh, we, we're, we're now dual citizens is what he, de what he describes it like. As a Christian, we are dual citizens. We're in the city, we're, we're, we're part of the kingdom of God and we're also part of the kingdom of this earth. And, and, that, we, and, that, is where, and that, sorry, is where we live. And so Augustine says, so how do we live? How do we live out both? Uh, how do we do that? And he came across something really wonderful, and I think it's really helpful for us this morning. He points us to Jesus' response to the question that's asked of him. Lord, what is the greatest commandment? And in Matthew 22, 37 and, and, and 39, Jesus responds with the two uh, greatest commandments. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and your strength. That's the first and then he says this wonderful thing. He says, the second is like it, to love your neighbour as yourself. You see, our responsibility as citizens of the kingdom of God and as citizens also of the cities of man, our first responsibility, our first priority, and Jesus is laying it out in prayer for us, is that we love the Lord our God with all our hearts, our soul, our minds and our strength. That's our responsibility. But there's a secondary, secondary responsibility that is just like it, is to love your neighbour as yourself. And Augustine says that's the city of man. And that's what God is calling us out into. Jesus is 
offering us in the prayer of prayers that we would become like this. It's a wonderful phrase, isn't it? It's just like it. It's just like it. In other words, what Jesus is saying there in that response is a beautiful thing. He says, to love yourself is a wonderful, true and right thing. You can't love your neighbour. Uh, if you're loving yourself poorly, you'll love your neighbour poorly. And so Jesus wants us to understand when he responds there that we love ourselves well and in doing so we love our neighbour. How do we love ourselves well? Jesus says we love ourselves well when we love God first. When we put the first things first. The best way to love yourself is to love God. And so I just wanted to share that this morning as we arrive now to a close to help us to understand there is a dual citizen and both are important. But Jesus in prayer is giving us a list of our priorities. And we can and we are supposed to live in both places. Lastly, I want I want us to consider this morning as we come in to close this morning. Can we trust a God who calls us to pray like this? Who calls us to prioritise and put first his kingdom and his will? Can we trust a God like that? And I suppose for many of us, maybe there's some who are not Christians listening this morning, that, that would probably feel like a tension. Can we trust a God who calls us to pray like this and ultimately that be formed in us, that we live like this, that we be um, carriers of the presence of God, the kingdom and the will of God into this world? Can we trust this as we live through our own earthly circumstances? I mentioned earlier our, our, our singleness, our anxiety, our depression, our our redundancy, uh, whatever it might be. And the awfulness of the brokenness of this earth. Can we trust a God who calls us to pray like this, to order our lives around his agenda? My response to that would be, well, Jesus doesn't just call us to pray these words. Doesn't just call us to be the ones that say your will be done, your kingdom come. Jesus, he prayed those exact words in his darkest hour. Before he was going to be handed over to death, he, he lay pain-stricken, crying out to his Father in heaven and saying, Lord, Father, your will be done. But in all authenticity, in all genuineness of his relationship, he said, Father, Father, I don't want to do this. Father, will you let this cup pass? If it's possible, Father, if there's another way, will you make it so? Jesus, on his way through suffering to transform the whole entire world and to give life to you and me, calls out to God. He says, I don't want to, I don't want to do, I don't want to be beaten. Father, I don't want to be mocked. Father, I don't want to be spat on. Father, I don't want a crown of thorns to pierce my brow. Father, I don't want to, I don't want to have major loss of blood. Father, I don't want to be turned away by those friends, those disciples that I've spent so much time sharing life with and loving. I don't want them to turn from me in my darkest need. Father, I don't want my nails and my feet to be pierced onto a cross. But Father, your will be done. I will walk through suffering because your will is the best will. And folks, Christians, listen this morning. Thank God. Thank God that his will was that Jesus died. Because through his death, his resurrection, he's alive now. It's because you and I 
that means that you and I could be saved, that you and I could enter into the relationship with the God of all of the universe and we can say, Father, Father, this is hard, I don't want this, I don't like this. But we can walk through what that story, what the life of Jesus tells us this morning is that God, our God, our Father, he can bring good where circumstances are excru excruciating, where pain is challenging. Our God, the God that we serve, the God that we live for can bring good out of any any level of excruciating pain or difficulty, any circumstance, any situation. And so, yes, yes, you can trust a God who calls you to pray like this, who knows your greatest need greater than you could even bear to imagine. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer. This is why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this morning I want to ask us, through the rest of this next week ahead, will you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Every single day, will you join me in praying it? And what I want to ask us to do over this next week is not just to recite the words, but I want to ask us to personalise the Lord's Prayer. Personalise the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be you. What would you say there? Lord, you are awesome. You are great. Lord, you rock my world. Whatever words that you would use to praise him and to adore him, you use in that section. And then when you arrive at your kingdom come, your will be done. We're saying in me, in me. But begin to personalise what does that mean for you in any given day. And then you flow through the next verse where Jesus is talking about provision in our life, talking about blessing, presence, gifts in our life we start to say give us this day our daily bread lord will you help me today because i have this report to file father will you give will that be in my daily bread will you help me in this difficult conversation discussion today lord my daily bread is that i have to wake up early with the kids i have to organize them for school and get lord will you fill me with strength that's my daily bread and so what we're doing there is we're asking God, we're looking into our day, what we can see ahead, and we're asking God to give us our daily bread in that. And so I want to invite you to do that together with me, reading through the Lord's Prayer and personalising it this week. Um, and listen, I would love, as always, my email address now and my number is shooting across the screen. I would love to hear your stories, how your communion, your prayer life and your relationship with God is continuing to develop and grow. I love you, we love you in this church, but God, our Father, loves you so much more, abundantly more, and he wants to bless you this week as you commune into a deeper level of relationship with him through prayer. Guys, this is why we pray. So let me pray for us now. Lord, we thank you. You are awesome and great. Father, I thank you that I come to you through relationship because of the obedience of Jesus to your will. Like even though it didn't look like it, it was good. And so Father, I come to you this, this day, Lord. And I want to honour you. I want to declare that you are great and awesome. Father, I want your um, holiness, your greatness, your glory to be seen and known in this earth. And so, Lord, will you help me to do that? Will you help me to reflect that in the way that I devote myself to you? Lord, and as I think of your kingdom, your city, your will, your values, your passions, your purposes, Father, may they too become a reality in my heart. Lord, and when I don't desire them, Lord, by your Spirit, will you help me? Because even though sometimes I don't know how to I know that your kingdom and your will is the best it's the best for me and it's the best for this earth we love you and we thank you in Jesus name amen bless you guys have a wonderful wonderful rest of your week and we'll see you so very soon bye <laughs>